What's up? This is Mike Wall and welcome to the 100K Agent Blueprint. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you don't know it yet, but you've just taken the first step, the most important step into building a six-figure income in real estate. And I'm so excited to be able to share that with you today. Um, I am going to, um, I'm going to share with you everything that I did when I got started into the real estate industry up until what, up until what we're doing in the industry today. Uh, today we're generating well over uh, a, mil, a $1.2 million in gross commission income. Uh, my first year in real estate, I hit $150,000 uh, net to myself. And uh, just a quick backstory on me. Um, as I said before, my name is Mike Wall, if you don't already know that. Uh, I've been in real estate full time since 2014. Before real estate, I sold copiers um, and was absolutely miserable. I did it for five years. Um, and before that, I actually worked on a real estate team uh, with, a, uh, with a, one of the largest agents in Ohio at the time. So I got my license in 2002 and uh, I figured, you know, if I if I was going to get into real estate that um, I wanted to learn from the best so I could be the best. And so what I did is I sought out the number one agent in our city it was a guy named Phil Herman at the time, worked for Remax. He was selling well over 300 units a year. He was running a team um, and uh, I knew I wanted to be a part of that because uh, my goal was to shorten the learning curve. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have a lot of resources, but I did have time. And so I knew that if I would make an investment of my time into what he was doing, that I'd be able to learn and hopefully be able to recreate that someday. And that's essentially what I've done. So um, rewind back to the year 2002. I got in uh, to real estate, got licensed, obviously was working uh, strictly as a buyer specialist. Uh, so what I did was um, when a sign call came in, this is before internet leads or anything like that. Uh, when a sign came in off one of Phil's many listings, uh, it would be a, uh, it would be round robin out to someone on the team. And, uh, I would intercept the call and then we would try to convert that buyer into either a showing or an appointment at the office, uh, for a buyer console. And so, um, I went and did that for, um, roughly about seven years and was really good at it. Um, I was 24, 25 years old, um, making roughly eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year. Um, so for a 24, 25 year old kid, that was really good income. Uh, we were very happy. My wife and I had our first child um, who's now 16. His name is Pearson. And um, life was just good. Uh, we were moving up the ladder. Uh, I was learning a ton. I was having fun and just enjoying life. And um, everyone knows what happened in 2008. Uh, I rode the market out for as long as I could and um, nobody was buying houses anymore. The market essentially just completely dried up. And so I tried to ride it out for as long as I could. Um, and um, in, in May of 2009, uh, I could no longer make it work, could make a sustainable living in, uh, in real estate any longer. And so I uh, accepted a job in corporate America selling copiers. And uh, I just remember being so grateful for that because it was really like a lifeline for us. Um, we actually ended up having to short sale our home, uh, our new home that we built uh, just two years prior. And um, we were having a baby at the time, my youngest, Hunter, who's now 11 years old. And um, it was just a it was a very tough time. It was a very humbling experience, um, but I learned so much from it. And I'm so grateful for having gone through that um, because it taught me a lot, uh, a lot that I still use today. So fast forward to um, to 2009 when I got into the copier industry and immediately started selling copiers. And again, was just really grateful for that position. Uh, really starting to enjoy myself um, and, um, and and starting to do well. And, uh, and, and so I did that. I, 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 I got into the President's Club. I won all the awards in, in copier sales for uh, our local office and, um, and really just started to hit a wall. You know, I, I started to realize that um, this corporate America uh, lifestyle 
um, just wasn't in alignment with uh, the vision that I'd had for my life. And um, as good as it was, I was absolutely miserable at the time. Uh, I just remember uh, being about three or four years in and just in looking myself in the mirror and almost in tears thinking, can I do this for the rest of my life? And I was making pretty good money. And I just remember thinking, um, I can't do this. Uh, I can't, I, I don't matter. It didn't matter how good the money was. I just knew I couldn't sustainably do this for the rest of my life. And um, so this was, this was in, gosh, 2013. Um, I re remember going on Christmas vacation, just depressed. And um, I knew I wanted to get back into real estate. I just didn't know how, and I didn't know when. Um, so what I started to do in November of 2013 is I started to call the expired listings and, um, I worked an outside sales job. So, uh, there wasn't a lot of supervision as long as you were, uh, turning in sales. Um, there wasn't a lot of micromanagement. They were okay. And I was doing well at the time. So I remember the first thing every morning at eight o'clock, um, I would actually go through and look up the expired leads in the MLS every single day and make, you know, 10 or 12 or 20 calls to the new expireds every single day, every day, even Saturdays and Sundays. And um, so I just remember um, starting to pick up some momentum and it feeling really, really good. Um, this was in 2013. Um, I don't think that there was a lot of competition uh, in the expireds or in real estate. Uh, I think the market was still healing. Um, I think it was, uh, you know, still, it was starting to pick back up. It wasn't at the bottom, but I think a lot of people were jaded to, to being in the real estate industry or having anything to do with it, uh, given what had happened in 2008. So, um, man, I just remember uh, really, really starting to pick up some momentum going into the new year, um, February, March, April. Uh, and it got to the point in May uh, of 2014 that um, I had built up a listing inventory of 44 listings, 44 listings. And I remember going to my wife and we had a pretty steady income now, both from real estate and from the copier business um, and going to my wife and just being terrified and saying, because I mean, you all know this, this real estate game is a commission only job. Uh, it, it really is. And, um, I know that scares a lot of people and granted it should. Um, but the reality of it is it's, it's still one of the best decisions I've ever, ever made. And I'm so happy I did make that decision, but it was terrifying. And I remember going to my wife and saying, listen, honey, um, here's what we're making from real estate. Here's what we're making at the copier job. Uh, I'm actually make it's costing me more money to be at my corporate job than it is to be in real estate. And, you know, we talked it through and came to the realization that um, it would be best if I quit my corporate job and just went into real estate uh, full time. And we had saved up some money at that point. We just felt really good. We felt like we were in a good position to be able to make that uh, transition. And so ultimately what we did is um, I, you know, I went to my uh, went to my boss and and I told him, hey, listen, thanks for everything, but I'm going to try my hand at real estate, and I'm so glad once again that I did do that. Uh, that first year, 2000, the first full year, 2014, uh, I went out and sold 57 houses, and um, really just started um, doing what you're doing. I was looking for information. I was I was I just remember having a great feeling. Uh, being excited about life again, uh, being an entrepreneur just felt so good. And I was on my way and uh, I, I'd caught, I'd caught the bug. And uh, I remember just, I mean, absorbing every piece of information, podcast, blog, video that I could and um, uh, started to grow a business. The second year went over a hundred units, uh, sold 104 units to be exact in my second year, third year, uh, started building a team, hired an admin, hired a couple agents, sold 187 houses. Fourth year, uh, started to scale, went over 300 units in my fourth year. 
and fifth year, which I'm in right now, uh, we'll have done over 531 units in the last 18 months. I have 12 agents now. I have um, three administrative staff. I've built up an investment company. Uh, my partner and I, uh, uh, we, also, uh, we also have a mortgage arm that supports our real estate team. And um, we're just continuing to grow and to scale. And we're just having a great time doing it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm not sure where I'm catching you at, where I'm meeting you at today, but my hope is that you're somewhere in a, in a place to where you're ready to receive this message and you're ready to take action on what you're about to see. Uh, because what you're about to see uh, will change your life and it will change your life for the better. And, um, and, and I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of your journey today. So let's get started. So welcome to the 100K Realtor class, the webinar that hopefully will um, make a really impact, a real big impact on your life. Congratulations on being here, uh, coming to trainings like this to try to get better is one of the most important things you can do on your journey to a six figure income. Did you know that less than 7% of the people in the US make more than $100,000? And real estate is actually the perfect vehicle to be able to do it because the margins are so high. As we know, uh, on, on most transactions, you're getting either a 3% or a 6% commission. Right. So do the math. You know, if you sell if you sell 10 houses, just 10 houses, that's less than one a month. And they're all six percent commissions. Uh, then on one hundred thousand dollars is six thousand dollars. And you're that. So that's 10 houses is sixty thousand dollars in net income. So uh, my mission is to be the number one most trusted resource for like minded real estate agents to get the resources they need in order to thrive in this industry, not get by, but thrive in this industry. So what I'm going to share with you right now are these steps in order to help get your mind in the right place in order to be able to receive the information that I'm about to share with you. So one of the most important things uh, you'll need to know is your why. And uh, for a lot of us in this real estate industry, this sounds cliche, uh, but it is truly important that you know and understand your why. Um, because your why is what drives you. And here's a hint, it's not money. So um, I'll share with you my why. Uh, as I told you before, I had two sons. My 16 year old son, his name is Pearson, uh, was diagnosed with autism when he was two years old. And um, so my why, my why is connected to being able to, to make sure that Pearson, um, whether he recovers or if he never does, will always be taken care of. In other words, he'll always have an income to depend on um, after, well after we're gone. And uh, so I, I, it is important for me, uh, it gets me out of bed every day, it gets that fire burning for me to be able to, um, to get connected with that. It, it, it creates emotion and emotion creates motion. And um, it's important that you connect with your why because why power will always outlast willpower. Uh, willpower is not a sustainable energy, but why power is. So really try to get connected to why it is you're watching this video, why it is you want to, um, why it is you want to make a sustainable six figure net income in real estate. Write out your goals. Guys, I can't tell you how important it is to write out your goals. Um, get clarity on your goals. Writing out your goals and getting clarity is the first step to making them tangible. To, the first step to making them materialize it and be something that's real that you can feel and touch. Make sure they're your goals and no one else's. And what I mean by that is um, when I got started into this industry, I started to sell a lot of houses. And so for me, when I wrote out my goals every year, I just noticed it was about selling more and more houses. And, um, and sometimes, sometimes you get stuck um, on, a, on a path that is not your own. It might be someone else's um, because to what end? 
you know, if you're going to sell, you know, one year we sold 100 houses, then we sold 200 houses, then we sold 300 houses. It's like, where does that end? And so um, writing writing out my goals, getting clarity on my goals and really understanding why it is I wanted to sell more houses um, helped me understand that what I really wanted wasn't to sell more houses. It was to... Um, it was design a design a life that I wanted to live, th that I could build wealth and help other people. And that's why I'm here with you today. With so many distractions, shiny objects and poorly run or limited brokerage training, it can be difficult to be successful in this industry. It's not about doing a thousand different things. It's about doing two or three things a thousand times. Persistence pays off. And a great example of this is, um, is if I rewind the clock back to 2013, 2014, um, my persistence in calling the expired leads um, every single morning, I was very disciplined. I was very connected to my why. And, um, and, and, and in doing that, I was able to build up a listing inventory of 44 listings and quit my job less than a year later. So it's just about, it's about showing up. It's about doing those fundamentals over and over and over again. It's, it, it, it's simple, but it's not easy, right? Uh, it's simple in that the fundamentals are all the same, but it's it's not easy in that you have to take action on those fundamentals, right? The action is up to you, and um, and it's no it's no different than running a marathon, right? It's simple. We put one foot in front of the other um, quickly, and they call that running but it's not easy to run 26.2 miles, right? So it's not, I think one of the biggest challenges is, is sometimes there's so much information, it's difficult to decipher in what order to do um, those fundamentals or, or, those, or all those things, all that information that we're, we're being overwhelmed with. And so what's really good about um, connecting with or partnering with someone like me through a webinar like this is I can really help you do the right things in the right order. Having a routine and living by your calendar. White space on a calendar is like vacation time, guys. I'm very, um, I'm, I'm very strict about how I run my calendar and um, so much so that I'll actually color code my calendar um, and, uh, I'm, I'm a Nazi. If it's not on my calendar about, about, if it's not on my calendar, essentially it doesn't exist. And, and some of this stuff will seem trivial, but it is so important that as you start to get busier, that you dictate your day, your day doesn't dictate you. I find that when I talk to most agents, it seems to me like they're, 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 when they're disorganized, when their business is the most chaotic is when they're not following a calendar. In other words, they're letting the events of the day dictate what they do. Uh, they're not dictating the events of the day. So every, every, so every night, like tonight, um, I'll run over my calendar for tomorrow to make sure that I'm, I'm, I, I, I know what I need to do. So when I go to bed, I know exactly what I have to do tomorrow uh, before I even wake up. And I make sure that, and I'm disciplined enough to adhere to that. So understanding optimization. This is really important, um, especially as you start to make more money and have less time. Uh, understanding optimization, uh, this has to do with the data sources for your leads. In other words, uh, the, we know that you, in, in, in real estate, uh, Having leads is everything. In, in, in any business, guys, having leads is everything. Uh, because without leads, you don't have a business. So what we what we what we start doing in real estate is is when we start making more money and we have less time, we have to make sure that our data sources, um, that the, the leads that are coming in are are of, of a quality enough so that when we pick up a phone, we have an opportunity to set an appointment with that lead, right? Um, some of the data sources that we're using are for, for sale by owners or for expireds or for um, home valuations 
or for uh, buyer internet buyer leads, right? And, and really, what these are, what those are doing is is they're sifting through the general public, so um, that they're identifying that they're either going to be buying or selling a home sometime in the near future. So that every time you pick up the phone to call that individual, there's much more of a likelihood that you would set an appointment with them either to show them a house or to go out to their property and list the property for them. Um, using a dialer, again, this is about optimiz optimizing your time. So using a dialer, we use a service called Mojo Dialer. And the Mojo Dialer is a triple line dialing system. We funnel all of our leads into the Mojo Dialer. And the cool thing about the Mojo Dialer is it will call three lines at one time, all up on your screen. And then when somebody connects, it will actually bring that leads information up onto the screen and you can read straight from the screen and talk intelligently about their property. Also, knowing what times to call. Um, I can't tell you uh, how important this is. Uh, we understand there was a lead management study, I believe, done by uh, MIT uh, back in the early two, well, no, it was in the mid 2000s. I think it was 2005, 2006 range. And a lot of, a lot of um, very valuable data came out in that study. And uh, what, what it found is that the best times to call each day were between 8 and 10 a.m. in the morning and 4 and 7 p.m. in the afternoon. That's when you have the highest likelihood of being able to contact somebody. Uh, in that study also, it showed that uh, you have the, the, the highest likelihood of getting a hold of an internet buyer lead registration or seller lead registration uh, within the first five minutes of them, of them registering on your site. So that information is crucial because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many dials you make, it's really about how many contacts you make because the, the more contacts you make, the more likely it is that you'll set an appointment with that contact. Um, I, one, of, one of my favorite things to do is to really, um, uh, and, and I, I'm, I'm like this with anything. Uh, I, I think that the thing that made me so successful is that right out of the gate, I figured out uh, what I wanted to do and I went all in. So my niche was, when I say niche, master, leverage and repeat, uh, my niche was the expired listings, right? And so every day, um, like clockwork, every single morning, 8 a.m., I called the expires. Didn't matter if there was one or if there was 30, I called every single one of them. And um, I followed up, right? And, and so I had a com if I was able to have a conversation with that lead, if they weren't ready to meet with someone now to list their property, then I put them into our uh, our CRM, our management system, and uh, set them up on a drip campaign, and uh, and then followed up. I, I simply put in the notes that they they're not ready to list at the moment, but in the next three months or next month or next six months, that I needed to call them back and check to see if they were ready to go ahead and get their property on the market, and I just did that religiously, and that's why. That's why, I mean, to me, the, the part of, of that is that I, the reason why I really got good at the expired listings is because I really went all in on expired listings. And so um, I got really good at it. And, and so when I talk about niche, your niche doesn't have to necessarily be expired listings. It could be for sub owners. It could be your sphere of influence. It could be buyer internet leads. It could be Zillow leads, whatever. But it's really good that if you niche into something, you master it. You get really, really good at it, and then you leverage it out, right? So a, a good example of leverage uh, in, in the expired listings is perhaps hiring an ISA, right? So hiring an ISA, and the reason why you have to master it before you leverage it is because you've got to be able to teach your leverage how to do it as good or almost as good as you did it so that you can expect the same result, right? So it is important that you you niche, you master it. You have to master it, mastery so you can teach and then leverage and then repeat, right? And so the next thing for me was internet buyer leads, right? We brought on our Commissions Inc. platform and we started generating tons and tons of internet leads. Lead gen is the single most important activity for any business. Uh, no one ever explains this side of the business because it's not super sexy. They don't talk about it in real estate school. Um, they don't talk about it on TV. Um, 
but it is absolutely critical. As I said before, if you don't have leads, you don't have a business. So the law of 33, um, here are the three uh, critical foundational lead gen um, categories that make up a perfectly balanced business. And so the law of 33 is 33.3% of each one of these categories will represent the perfectly balanced real estate business. So there's inbound lead generation, there's outbound lead generation, and then there's your sphere of influence. And I'm gonna explain those for you. So inbound lead generation, these are leads that are coming into you daily, right? These are buyer lead registrations, they're for sale by owners, uh, they're expireds, they are uh, their search engine leads, Facebook leads, buyer and seller leads, uh, any lead that registers and is, um, is, is, is emailed into you or comes into you in the form of, uh, of some sort of a third party site, right, is an inbound lead. It's typically you're paying for these leads and they're being sent to you daily or they're registering daily. You're providing some value. Um, uh, perhaps with your internet leads, uh, either in the form of a home evaluation or you're, uh, you're allowing them to search the MLS through your site. The, the sites that we're currently using for our FISBO and expired leads uh, is a site called Vulcan 7. We love Vulcan 7 um, uh, because they provide uh, really accurate data and it also comes with a dialer. Uh, before Vulcan 7, I used Red X um, there are dozens out there. You just pick the one typically that has the best data in your area. Um, for our internet buyer and seller leads, we're using a platform called Commissions Inc. And these leads are generated from uh, mostly from pay-per-click and Facebook. So these are leads that are out on Google or Bing or Yahoo, and they're typing in, you know, whatever city, homes for sale, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, two baths. Uh, fenced backyard, and then our site is popping up on the top one, two, or three, and um, and we're bringing the consumer into our website, showing them some listings, and and then asking them for our registration. So in that, we're getting their name, their phone number, and their email address, and then the 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 search site will then save a search based on the search that they did on our website and automate new listings out to the lead. Um, respectively. Uh, your outbound lead sources would be um, open houses, door knocking, or circle prospecting. Uh, these require effort. Uh, typically, there's not much of an expense involved, uh, if any at all, but they're, they're, it, is, it is more labor intensive, if you will. And, and, and so the great thing the, the, the thing about inbound leads too, if I could just go back for a second, is typically there's an expense involved with, with inbound leads. So you might have to pay, um, but it's less labor intensive. And uh, with outbound leads, uh, they're typically free or don't cost a lot of money. And uh, it's very labor intensive. Now, the, the difference with inbound leads is typically they're more competitive. So there are, there are a lot of agents can pay for leads. So there are a lot of agents calling those leads. Whereas outbound leads, there's little to no competition at all in outbound leads. In other words, you go to an open house, there's not gonna be an, another agent at your open house trying to get the buyers from your open house. It'll just be you and your registration sheet. And, and then anybody that walks in that doesn't have representation would belong to you, right? As a buyer client, if you can build rapport and, and, and get them to know, like, and trust you. Um, same thing with door knocking. Uh, although there are agents out there who door knock, um, it is less competitive, uh, but it is more labor intensive. This is very, it's a very effective way to connect with sellers and build rapport, um, just to be face to face with people in your neighborhood, um, dropping off a business card or a neighborhood, um, uh, a neighborhood sales report or something of value, right? And just being able to connect with people. And then circle prospecting, of course, we're using the Mojo Dialer for. Um, we can literally make um, up to 800 phone calls in a day. Uh, we'll, we, we will pick out specific neighborhoods geographically and, um, 
and and the mojo dialer will then load the data from all for an entire subdivision into the dialer and allow us to dial through that so it's super it's labor intensive it's not fun low competition and the great thing about like circle prospecting for instance is we build uh, a, a pipeline of what are called nurtures, right? These are people that are identifying that within the next 12 months um, that they're likely to sell their home. And we love that. Um, your sphere of influence. Um, your sphere of influence is a great resource. Uh, really, the importance of your sphere of influence is um, unlike inbound and outbound leads, you don't have to build rapport with your sphere of influence. These are people who already know, like, and trust you. So you're, you're and, and I can tell you one of the most difficult things to do, especially in a um, in a consumer facing industry is build rapport um, because sell, buyers and sellers have so many options. And what's great about your sphere of influence is typically you don't have to spend a lot of money marketing to them. Um, they already know, like and trust you, which is the most important thing. People will not buy from you unless they know, like and trust you. And so. Your, your sphere of influence can be very, very fruitful, very, very quick. And um, some of the things we're doing with our sphere of influence is we're doing send out cards for major holidays, for birthdays. Um, we have all of our SOI on email drip campaigns through a, a, um, a company called Infusionsoft. Uh, we're doing networking events. Uh, so we, we might do, um, we might do a, a, you know, a happy hour and invite all our past sellers or a movie night or give out pumpkin pies or something to that effect. Um, and then we're big into social media on Facebook and doing video to stay top of mind in front of our past client base. Um, it is important, it is, especially as you grow and scale, um, to have multiple lead sources. And you, when I say multiple lead sources, you know that when you have an inbound and outbound and a, a, an SOI strategy that you will, um, the likelihood of you of you doing a lot of business is, is immensely higher. And so um, when, when I talk about, when I talk about knowing, um, having multiple lead sources, um, you wanna make sure that, and remember, it's not, it's not about like when you start into the business, getting as many lead sources as possible, you still have to niche, master, and, and leverage and repeat. But once you do that, you wanna add additional lead sources. That makes sense. Um, using a CRM, again, seems, um, seems trivial, seems like you know, in any sales job, everybody would use a CRM. But it, it, according to the, the, the statistics from uh, the National Association of Realtors, less than 20% of real estate agents are actually using a CRM. And if you don't know what a CRM is, a CRM is a system, uh, we use Commissions Inc. is a system, a database for you to keep all of your client information, um, to be able to follow up with clients, to be able to provide value to your clients, and um, just house all your clients in one, uh, in, in one database so that you can, um, you can check on them, you can nurture them, and you can do the things that, uh, uh, are necessary to do for them to continue to do business with you long term. So knowing your numbers, um, this is really, really important, uh, especially as you start to transition from being a solo agent to hiring your first admin to then hiring your first agents to then scaling your team because um, you you want to you want to know that that when you hire somebody, for instance, um, that your expectation is that there's a return on that hire. In other words, if you hire an admin, your first admin, and you're paying them forty thousand dollars a year, uh, you want to know that 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 forty thousand dollars is you're getting a return on your investment. So that forty thousand dollars should actually ten x your your income. And so like you put a dollar in, you get 10 back, right? And so you, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know, um, you don't, you don't know what to expect out of the people that you hire. And not only that, but you will want to start to keep a running P and L profit and loss statement for your business, um, to hold all of your expenses accountable. 
uh, because you, you want to know the lead sources that are paying you at 10x and the lead sources that are either losing money or paying on a very low return uh, so that you can reposition that money uh, perhaps more into the category of the 10x lead system. Uh, knowing your market, because, guys, I can't stress this one enough. This is, this is again, something that um, you'd think every agent would, would, um, would be cognizant of, but you'd be surprised. Uh, becoming a market expert evens the playing field with you and more experienced agents. So you can be brand new into this industry, like literally brand new, and if you know the market really well, you can speak very intelligently in front of a consumer and they won't even know the difference, even if you've been in the market for or in, in the industry for less than a year. And um, what, what's really great about, you know, what's really great about knowing your market is that you can you, when you know your market, you can you can sit in front of a seller and you can speak intelligently, but you can do it with confidence. And that's what sellers want. When they hire somebody, they want somebody with experience, yes, but they want somebody with market knowledge. They want somebody with confidence, right? And so it's important that if you, when you know your market, it builds confidence in you so that when you're speaking in front of that seller, uh, it's easier to build rapport as an expert. Um, using video to create influence and credibility. Again, this is something that is, this is the future. And in fact, um, I had a meeting with, with my team uh, and will continue to meet with my team. There has been a paradigm shift. The internet has created a paradigm shift in our industry. And um, most of the information that's available to us as real estate agents is also available to consumers. In fact, um, it borders on information overload. More, our job now, today is is really helping the the seller disseminate that information and make sense out of it and and so i find myself having to do that a lot uh, but where there's a real opportunity in our industry right now is through creating video right we we know that people um, buyers and sellers they're consuming content and it and what video allows you to do is position yourself as a local expert so let me give you an example of that, right? I, so I like I, I work in a in a community called Mason, Ohio, right? It's one of it's a it's a more affluent city uh, where the average price point um, is much higher than than uh, than the average price point where our, our office is actually located. Um, so what what I did is I, I picked the best restaurants in town. Uh, one of them's a brewery. One of them is a pizza place. Uh, one of them is is a, an upscale dinner place, and I I actually brought the owners onto a Facebook Live and interviewed them. And what's really cool about that is I gave those people a platform to tell their story. So they were grateful for that. And, and in doing that, they shared that video with their entire network. So they put me, the most popular restaurants in town, shared the video content that we created together in front of their entire network. So it gave me an audience uh, in, we never talked about how new I was, how many houses I had sold, but it automatically gave me credibility to be able to speak um, to an audience. And um, and again, it would, the, the information was free and the 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 business owner was was grateful for me. So now, when somebody goes to them and talks to them about real estate, or if 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 they themselves are having a conversation about real estate, their own personal real estate, guess who they're going to think of? So video is really important. And there's a huge opportunity for video right now. So make sure that you're, you have a strategy for video. Personal development. Um, well, you're here, I guess, first of all. So uh, uh, um, congratulations for that. Uh, but personal development, guys, uh, th this is something that will never end um, uh, because you will always want to level up. Uh, you will always want to continue to grow and get better. Um, it becomes almost addictive. Uh, you 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 don't want to stay stagnant and to continue to level up it's not necessarily about doing more it's not it's not not about taking action although action is part of it it's about it's about who it's about who you become right it's about becoming more it's not about doing more it's about becoming more and the best way to do that is through books through watching videos through podcasts and just um, networking with others mastermind groups these are great for things like that 
So Jim Rohn says, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. It's one of my favorite quotes um, because, uh, you know, what may be happening to you in your life is that maybe you're not surrounded by the right people. Maybe you're not surrounded by the people who are challenging you to level up. Uh, maybe they're okay with you the way things are. And, th and that's fine, guys. These may be really nice people, but if you want to continue to to raise the bar, to raise your to raise your game, your level of play, then you've got to get around people who are playing at a higher level than you. You should always be the dumbest person in the room, always. And so just make sure you're very careful, you're very intentional about the people you put in your circle and make sure that there are people who are challenging you, who are who are questioning um, the way you're you, the way you're operating your business, the way you're living your life. I mean, you always want people around you like that who care. Uh, choosing the right environment. Um, again, this just goes back to surrounding yourself with the right people. Um, again, you may like the people around you, but you always want to make sure that they're challenging you to um, to really take it to a different level, right? So, um, you know that that to, again. To, so this this webinar, um, if you made it to the end. I'm glad you did. Um, I think it will be well worth your time. Hopefully you got dialed in connect and connected to what I was just talking about. Uh, we are, my goal again is to, to help agents um, sift through uh, all of the distractions, all of the noise in our industry. Uh, people, these are people who are good people who really, really want to make it in our industry, who really want to build a business, who really want to make a six figure income um, in that this information connects with them. And so I'm looking for those people. I'm partnering with those people. I'm not trying to take any money from you. I'm not trying to get you to pay me anything. But what I'm trying to do is to build a connection with you so that we can help take your business together to the next level. And if you're serious about doing that, you can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one business assessment meeting with me. And um, the reason why I love doing that is because I can meet you where you're at. You may be selling 100 homes a year, and this may be the third year or fourth year in a row you've done that. And so, and that's the level of success that you achieve, but you can't get over the hump. Or you may be an agent that sold one home, and you just don't know what to do. And so I'm connecting with everybody. And so I would encourage you, go to meetmikewall.com and schedule a free one-on-one -on -one business assessment with me. And let's talk about what it's going to take to take your business to the next level. Thanks so much for watching.